Thank you for tuning in to another edition of our continual series, There Is No Collapse. I did not intend to make this particular recording, but I have no choice. You're looking at a chart of gold futures. This chart for gold futures is the August 2016 contract. The rumors still don't stop. They're, they're, they're still persistent. It seems like every week now there's a new rumor. There's a new video. Everyone's talking about collapse. They're getting their views up. I mean, it's, it's a good way to get views, talk about collapse and all this other stuff. And these people don't know what they're talking about. They're just peddling fiction, to borrow a phrase from Obama. And the latest one is the COMEX collapse. They have been calling for the COMEX to collapse since 2008, all right, and maybe even before that. It just came to my uh, attention in 2008. So uh, we're in 2016. I mean, it's been almost a decade, and there's no collapse. They're saying they're having problems with deliveries, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let me explain a few things to you guys so you guys can understand the way futures contracts work and the way the COMEX or any other futures exchange works. Even if it were possible, even if, let's say, the rumors are true and there is an absolute, positively, a collapse coming up. All right. Understand the powers that be will not allow this to happen. It doesn't suit their purpose. The central banks will simply provide liquidity and that will be the end of it. All right. That's how that works. There's no collapse. Most of the people talking about uh, the paper market, they like to call the futures market, they like to call the paper market. They also include the ETFs like the GLD and the SLV ticker symbols into that mix. The majority of the people who are making these videos, some of them I actually have the, the highest esteem for. They've done a lot of good. But at the end of the day, leave the market stuff alone. Because most of these cats, they've never held a Series 7 securities license. They've never held a Series 3, which is a commodity futures securities license. They've never set for an exam. They've never worked on Wall Street. Most of them have never even traded a commodity futures uh, contract to save their life at all, period, ever. Most of them don't even have brokerages accounts. Please don't let me start naming names. Some of the, the most famous newsletter writers and sellers of trading timing signals and things of that nature have never even traded in a, a day in their life. Most of them do not have active accounts. And they'd be the first to tell you, uh, I have no money um, in the market exposed at this time. Please don't make me start naming names. All right. Some of the biggest names you will be surprised. All right. I spent a lot of years working in the financial sector. I worked on Wall Street. I worked at two different firms. I was a, der a derivatives analyst and systems trader and developer. So I know what I'm talking about. I met a lot of people. All right. I've worked in several different. I worked in banking. I worked for the, uh, a couple of the top five banks that you know of. I work there. All right. I know a lot of people. I also worked in healthcare. I also worked in law enforcement. I've done a lot. I've met a lot of people. I know a lot of famous people and I know a lot of people who know famous people and I also have some pretty powerful and blank 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 people in my immediate family so we'll leave it at that I don't need to brag and boast and name drop most of the people would be shocked if I did so and it could have dire consequences so I will not just suffice it to say that most of the people who are telling you about these collapse stuff they're lying they don't know what they're talking about they do not understand all right. If they did, then they will be honest and tell you that it's impossible. OK, let's go back for a minute. If you have not watched the series, there is no collapse. You need to you need to do so so you can understand 
what's going on. But I'll suffice to say in a nutshell, there is no COMEX collapse because most of the futures contracts that they, um, that they have now are non-delivery. They are non-delivery. You cannot take physical delivery. It is impossible. It has not come part of the deal. It tells you in their fine print. Just go to the website and pull up uh, the, the contract. You can download the, the PDF file pamphlets for free. They break down the futures contracts, tells you everything you need to know about them, the months that are traded, time, day it's traded, uh, the contract rollovers, and all that stuff. Okay, They will tell you that. All right. Another thing that people don't understand is that in the USA, the majority of the how can I say this? The business plan in the markets in the USA are bucket shop oriented. All right. Any of you who know about the old school bucket shops going back in the, the 1920s, you would go in and you basically be trading against the broker. All right sometimes your money wasn't even placed into the real market and for a lot of the forex brokers today you're when you put when you place buy and sell you're not really buying and selling anything you're not your money's really not being exposed to the actual uh market itself your brokers holding it they have a a computerized system that that does this these things and then you're basically betting against your broker it's a modern day bucket shop all right that's how that works most people don't know that all right, so th there is no delivery. All right, another thing too. Okay, when you open a brokerage account to trade futures contracts, there are different aspects and different types of accounts. There's hedging accounts and there's speculative accounts. If you are a hedger, then you ha it's a whole different application process. If you're a speculator, then it's another process. Also, if you want to take delivery on things, you have to fill out paperwork specific to that way before you even put on a trade and in most cases before you even fund your account you have to tell them that you are expecting to take delivery so that they know that going up front and in doing so your margin requirements are going to be different than everyone else understand that you're not going to get that uh, that 50 percent day trade margin when you're trading the e-mini S&P 500 your margin is going to be higher all right there, there are all types of, 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 of nuances with this and it varies from broker to broker but at the end of the day you have to fill out paperwork when it comes to taking uh, physical there's other uh, checks and balances they have to go forth too you have to put up large amounts of money large amounts of money because you have to cover storage costs delivery cost and you have to cover um, interest all right, there, there are fees and, and interest, okay, that go on top of this. All right, that's why futures contract prices are higher than spot prices because it has to take into account uh, future price and storage costs and interest and fees. Okay, there's fees. There's a fee for them to hold your ten thousand ounces of silver or gold. I'm just throwing numbers out at the warehouse it costs money there's storage fees it's like if you go to a, a public storage you don't just get to have, uh, have them store your junk for nothing they're gonna charge you a monthly fee for that well same thing with, with trading uh, futures uh, physical uh, commodities okay unless you want 5,000 uh, bushels of, of soybeans or corn dropped off at your door you know, and as you be the old joke, you have to get out of that long futures position. You have to liquidate it by the by the last trade day. All right, and there and there's a there's calendars associated with trading futures to let you know first notice day, last notice day, uh, last trade day. Okay, there are different days and things of that nature. All right, and you're going to be out of the position long before all that happens. And then there's contract rollover too, and you can see it because the open interest will change. So, like if let's say, all right, right now, for example, we're trading September in the Dow, S&P, Nasdaq, and the Russell and the Nikkei futures. Okay, so what that means is if you're still in the June contract, today is your last day to be out of that. You you have to be out by the close of the market today from those June contracts because we roll over today. All right, we rolled over. It's Friday, so they're rolling over. It's official now. Sometimes they do it a couple days beforehand, depends on your broker. But for the most part, open interest has shifted now into the September contract, so you must be out of that June contract. Okay, that's what happens. And if you fail to get out of a contract, 
you don't have to you don't have to be fearful that they're going to deliver 5000 you know bushels of soybeans at your door or corn or pork bellies or something like that all right what happens is most brokers are just take you out and remember futures contracts at the end of the day are settled in cash okay so they just take you out period you you, you just get out um the S&P and the Dow and stuff, those are automatically settled in cash, okay? That's how that works. But when you're trading gold and silver, precious metals, whatever, it's automatically assumed that you're going to get out before your last trade day. You're going to, and even before first notice day and all that. It's assumed, you know, you're going to get out. That's why futures contracts have short life spans because they trade multiple months. All right? That's why that exists. That's why there's not going to be a, um, a delivery. All right, the average futures trading account, unless it has changed, uh, and I can't picture or fathom that it, it, it changed that drastically over the several years, uh, I'm going to say that it's still the same. So let's use that. The average futures account is about five or ten thousand dollars. That's the average size of, of the average futures account. Five to ten thousand. That's it. It's small when compared to trading equities because you need a lot more money. Uh, the leverage on, on trading equities, the most you can get is two to one. But when you're trading futures, you know, you have leverage of 50 to one or higher. So it's different. Risk of ruin is different too. So, and they're not, the contracts are not designed for you to hold them forever. So the people who are talking this, you know, these a collapse every week, every month, whatever, I believe they're just talking to their, they're talking their book. They're probably long or short the contracts and they're trying to get they're trying to bid up the open interest. Okay? Um, pump and dump is not illegal in trading futures. It is when it comes to trading equities, but trading commodity futures are under different uh, laws than trading stocks. Like for instance, there's no such thing as insider trading in futures. It doesn't exist. It exists for trading stocks, but not for trading futures, okay? It's okay for me to give you, quote-unquote, inside information on the price of orange juice. Who cares? It's, it's not the same. Totally different laws, okay? So, please, stop the fear mongering. all right? There, there is no COMEX collapse, all right? Most people who, who claim they want to take delivery, they are not under any position to, 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 have to be able to take delivery. They don't have that kind of money. They don't have a million dollars. They don't have a couple hundred thousand dollars at risk and, and take gold delivery. It's just not It's just not like that. Most people's accounts are not set up as hedging accounts. Uh, they're not producers of commodities. They're not users of, com of commodities. They're not, um, uh, what's the, uh, they're not elevators, okay? You know, they're not anywhere in that process. Okay, you don't. You're not the farmer that's growing the wheat. You're not the elevator that's processing the wheat. You're, you're none of those things. You're just a speculator. So stop pretending that every time you put on a futures contract, you're gonna do a Gerald Salente and take physical. All right. Everybody's not Gerald Salente, and I have up, utmost respect for him. But everybody's not Gerald Salente. You're not sitting up here uh, doing futures contracts and taking delivery of physical. Your account ain't set up like that. This man's been trading uh, the precious metals longer than most people that listen to him have been alive. All right, so stop fear mongering and 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 and, and riding this man. Just just do do you. There is no Comex collapse. Period. All right. Anyone talking about they don't they can't deliver the physical is a lie. Trust me. They already have the money. They, if they've taken your money and you fill out that paperwork, you are gonna get your physicals. You just got to come up with the cash for, to pay for the storage fees and, and pay for the tractor trailer to drop it off at your front door. You got to pay for all that. You pay for all of that, trust me, you'll get your physical. There's no way in the world that they would not deliver your physical. Uh, in the last 70 years, no one who has been due, due money or physical in the commodities markets can, can say they never got it. It used to be that you could say no one who was who was ever owed money in trading commodity futures was was ever out of their money. That never had happened. It happened in stocks, but it never happened in futures until the um, the situation with um, with uh, Man Financial, MF Global. Uh, until that happened, no one was ever out money that was due them in, in, in trading futures. It was it was the safest thing that you could trade. It was safer than trading equities. Uh, 
it's just how it was, but they can't say that no more. But they still can brag, the futures markets can still brag that no one who was, was owed delivery didn't get their delivery. All right, they, you pay, you put that money up, oh, they trust me, they got it. They got gold and silver in, in stores. They even got oil farms. Uh, I think it's down in Texas somewhere. I, 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 don't quote me. I remember seeing um, seeing the footage of it a while back where they had just, man, they they have a tremendous amount of oil, oil farm reserve tanks just sitting there. So if, if, if you're trading, you know, the physical oils and, and you want your, you know, 500 barrels, uh, of all, trust me, they, they got it. They got it waiting for you. You can just come on. You just gotta come on and get it yourself, though. You gotta. I think that one you have to come get. Yeah, they don't drop that off. You gotta physically come get that. Have your own tanker truck to come pick that up. But for everything else, it's in storage. Trust and believe that. Um, they got cotton. They got it all. It's there. And if you want it, you can come get it. You just have to uh, fill out the contracts when you open up your account and do a whole bunch of other things and go through a process. But if you want your physicals, you can get it. So stop pretending that uh, the Comax can't deliver gold and silver bars because they can. They have it. All right. It's the U.S. who don't have no gold. <laughs> but the commodities markets are well intact. Ain't nothing wrong with them. All right. So just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. They're derivative contracts for a reason. And they settle in cash. You just need to know that. All right. So be encouraged.